Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Edinburgh Napier University MBA webinar. My name is Helen Sparopoulos, and I'm the Admissions Manager at Stafford Associates. And joining me this evening all the way from the university is Mamed Baga, who's the director of the MBA program. Good evening to you. Good evening. Okay, and I can see there's quite a few of you that have joined us. Welcome. Um, how we are going to conduct uh, this webinar today is I'm briefly going to introduce you to Stafford and what our function is. I'm then going to hand you over to Mamed, who's going to talk about the program. So do listen carefully to what he says. And towards the end of the webinar, we'll be able to open up the panel for you where you can type out any questions that you want to ask Mamed or myself. What I am going to do, however, is I'm going to look at these questions quite carefully because a lot of them are identical, okay, very similar or identical. So I am going to group these questions together. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, who is Stafford Associates? Now, Stafford was established in 1993, and we are a resource center for distance learning education in the Middle East as well as in Africa. And we are currently the resource center for six UK universities, one of which is Edinburgh Napier University. Now, the mere reason that you are here this evening with us means that you have been in touch with one of our experienced academic consultants. And uh, what our function here is, is to assist you throughout the application process. Uh, we also do offer some administrative support as well as some academic support. Now, we do offer a variety of programs ranging anything from certificates to diplomas, bachelors, MBAs, right through until doctorates. So we really do have programs for all your personal and your professional needs. So I'm now going to hand you over to my maid who's going to chat about the MBA program and I will join you towards the end of the webinar. Over to you. Thank you very much, Helen. Thank you. Hello, good evening to you all. Um, and thank you for that introduction, Helen. I'm Mamed, Mamed Beja. And uh, as Helen mentioned earlier uh, in her presentation, I'm responsible for the suite of MBA programs here at uh, Edinburgh Napier University. And uh, my, within my role, I look after 18 different MBAs, uh, 14 of which are uh, online MBAs. And the, my objective during the course of the next 15, 20 minutes is to give you a synopsis of what the university is all about and why um, we suggest you should consider um, our university to, to study um, your MBA. For those of you guys uh, who are not familiar, which I'm highly surprised if you're not because you're based in Dubai and you're global people, um, we are based in Scotland and as you know Scotland is part of the United Kingdom and the United Kingdom is part of EU and even post Brexit on the 29th of March, we still will be part of European Union. It's just we're not going to be part of Union, European Union, uh, I suppose the, the government of the Europe. Uh, our university is based in the capital of Scotland, beautiful Edinburgh, and uh, that's the northern part of um, the, the, the United Kingdom. And uh, we're very fortunate enough to be part of a bigger, I suppose, group of countries and in a sense not having certain autonomies uh, with regards to running um, our affairs in, in Scotland. And that gives us the edge. However, as far as the education is concerned, everything is in line with the United Kingdom's QAA, um, all accreditation and qualifications, etc., etc., is United Kingdom based. Um, and I suppose if you, if you chops and chops and have an opportunity to, to look at or go to draft guides if you have a look, it's really Scotland is renowned for being one of the most beautiful countries in the globe. So I feel quite privileged actually to, 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 to be living here. Um, so what we try to do with the uh, 
with the university is to go beyond the norm and uh, make absolutely sure to cater not only to our Scottish uh, students and Scottish industries, but in the same time to wider uh, the globe. As you probably uh, notice uh, on my uh, slides, you know, Edinburgh is a home to more than 100 FTSE, uh, 100 tech startups, and that gives an idea of how informed we are as far as the global connectivity is concerned. The, the university started is, um, I suppose, moving on to higher education, further on higher education in 1964. And um, by 1983, we've managed to, uh, to gain university status. And uh, at the moment, we are one of the most, uh, I suppose, driven and dynamic uh, universities within Scotland and within the United Kingdom. And innovation and inclusivity is something which is part of our ethos. Um, you will see in the, in the slides that uh, are in front of you, uh, that really we've been fortunate enough uh, through hard work, dedication, and really grateful to our academic and, and support team, that to be the front runner, and, um, and we've been recognized in 2017, for example, as being number one in the UK for nursing student talent. And that is really one of the key uh, pillars of what the university is all about. We are not only education providers, we try to nurse that talent and really try to help our students to, uh, to embrace what we call KIP, knowledge into practice. Because having that knowledge is really not sufficient. It's having the capabilities to turn the knowledge that you have into something tangible uh, with, uh, uh, that you could actually be able to, to, to recognize. Um, our graduate employability, employability is something which we're very proud of, and uh, we're sitting at the moment around about 95% uh, graduate employability. And what that means is our graduates, upon completion of their studies, 95% of them are in, the, in a full-time job within six months of graduation, or they go into um, further education. And that's very important to us, because what that really I suppose reinforces is that what we do create as far as education is concerned is that employability, making our students much, much more marketable purely because of the knowledge into practice ethos, ethos that we have. Uh, we consist of uh, six schools within three campuses and we are housed uh, uh, in the business school and all our uh, programs, uh, MBA programs are run um, from our Craig Lockett cancer, uh, campus rather, uh, at um, the business school. We currently have just just short of 20,000 students from 130 different nations. And I hope I never have to be challenged to list those 130 nations because it's I would never remember it. That's why I always look at the list. And um, out of the hundred, almost 20,000 students, just over 13,000 of those students are studying here with us at, uh, in Edinburgh, uh, within our three campuses. And the remaining students studying worldwide, either pure online, like yourselves, who are hoping to join us, or through blended or uh, partnership programs. We, for example, have several hundred, uh, several thousand rather, students over in Hong Kong, and we have flying faculty um, uh, going to Hong Kong once once in a while uh, to, to really educate our individuals. The purpose of uh, uh, this presentation really is about giving you an overview of what our global online program is all about, in particular the MBA, and it's a program that's designed to offer flexibility. Uh, where we can, you can, anywhere, any place, any time to study and uh, something that it won't restrict you with regards to having to be at a certain place all of the time continuously in order to have access to education. 
and they have various uh, means of trying to guide you and foster, I suppose, uh, what you're doing in order to make sure you get the, you get the results. We are very aware of our students' needs with the 130 nations uh, across the globe have more or less given us the realization that we have to that we have to be aware of different cultural diversity and different cultural needs, different style of uh, uh, learning and different style of education. So at the beginning, once our students join us, we try to induct them into the program quite, uh, uh, quite robustly to give them a good understanding of where they are and how they can really use what they already know as a benchmark with the view to, to really um, having to um, cope with the modules, related modules that we put to them uh, in order for them to become an educated individual with that, the patch of honor MBA after the name. Um, so the program is designed in a way that is going to meet individuals' uh, needs and requirements, be a generalist MBA or be a specialist MBA. There are certain modules uh, which, regardless of what the specialist is going to be, we have currently 14 um, different specialisms and two at the moment under construction. Uh, regardless of what the field, what the profession, you know, background is, the certain core uh, behaviors, core knowledge and understanding that's required in order for you guys to have the capabilities to, to be a much sleeker manager and a much, much more, I suppose, robust leader to have an impact and deal with flexibility and all the changes that are happening around us all the time. And uh, modules like building high performing organizations, marketing within the global economy, marketing and finance within the global economy, managing organizational change, um, leading strategic decision making, and Research skills for managers, which is really going to help, uh, assist you guys to develop your, uh, your, I suppose, the scoping study for your thesis prior to starting your MBA project. These are this is the engine of the MBA. If you are to um, study generalist MBA or one above all of those modules, uh, we'll be getting you to study contemporary issues and strategic management and managing innovation, and that will make, uh, enable you to become a generalist, I suppose, practitioner. It's ideal for general uh, practitioners. And if individuals decide to take any of our uh, specialisms, then instead of studying contemporary issues in strategic management and managing innovation, they'll be taking the related specialist uh, modules be it banking, be it HR, be it leadership, innovation, logistics, so on and so forth. So this more or less gives individuals flexibility to, to, to really either specialize themselves or maintain the, uh, their um, generalist uh, approach. In order to, to provide you what's needed, so you could meet your objectives, we created quite a bespoke interactive online resources. We are mindful of the challenges you have, is what, what I call business unusual in effect, where you have your own profession that you've got to cope with, and people at uh, individuals, managers, students at your level, you've got to continuously deal with change and you have to continuously deal with the lack of time and you have to do more with less. So we know how pressurized your, your environment is as a professional. We are aware of the fact that on top of that, the important, more important part actually is the family commitments, partners, children, so on and so forth. And in addition, you'll be taking on extra commitments of trying to educate yourself further by becoming a better manager, better leader, from better good to better, from better to excellent, so on and so forth, whatever that motivation is. Be mindful of your time management constraints. And what we tried to do was to really put interactive resources in place in a way that is going to accommodate your needs with the hope of 
making absolute sure everything's accessible to you. What we can't do is do your job for you. What we can't do is do your coursework for you. What we can do is to provide you with all the tools, with all the necessary skill sets in order for you to meet the objectives of the program. It's not going to be an easy program. It is not an easy program purely because if it was easy, everybody would have the word master or title master after the name. So in effect, Master of Business Administration, MBA, what comes with that title? What comes with that qualification? A certain level of responsibilities. Responsibilities of being able how to make uh, decisions under pressure, how to do more with less, how to cope with change, how to cope with all the challenges that uh, face us on a daily basis, and in the same time, how one on operational issues and uh, other, another on, eye on strategic objectives. So. To do that, we, we encourage everybody to raise their bar and try to dedicate at least 15 hours of the time to studying with us per module. I know it's a tall order to some students, however, the rewards are enormous and it's all about the price and the price. The price you're paying is giving up your time, at times giving up your weekends, giving up your holidays in order to, to meet the objectives of the program when it comes to assessments, et cetera, et cetera. The prize for that price that you paid is having a master's in business administration. Make yourself much, much more employable. Make yourself much, much more, I suppose, sleeker for management and leadership point of view. So those of you guys who successfully go through the application process with us, We'll, we'll start you up with the induction program. It's imperative for you to actually go through the online induction to really try to get to know what the program is all about, what the expectations are. And that will make life much smarter for you. Um, one of the things I always tell our students is that please don't do it the hard way. We're giving you all the tools. Please use the tools smartly in order to minimize distractions so you can concentrate on the core of the business. And the core of the business is to educate yourself further and to develop your knowledge and understanding. Knowledge alone at master's level really is not sufficient. It's the understanding that we, we tend to, uh, to, to try to get to focus on. To do that, you have to become a critical thinker. To be a critical thinker, you have to scrape the, I suppose, the facade of life and going into the depth of it and by questioning everything, by critiquing everything. I'm not saying go out there arguing over, over everything, but it's really getting to the depth of what's going on, why things happen the way it's happened, and how things have happened. So it moves you from first to second and third loop learner. And it's that critical thinking that separates you from the norm. It's that critical thinking that allows you to have a much deeper understanding of why things happen the way they do. After your uh, induction, uh, we have we give you direct access to our global online resources, libraries, all the related materials that you've been studying throughout that term, throughout that semester, or trimester, as we call it. And we put together a predetermined weekly surgery sessions. These are not lectures, these are weekly, weekly, uh, weekly rather, surgery sessions. We don't deliver lectures. All the material is interactive. It gives you all the necessary tools that you require in order to test yourself, I know to develop yourself further. In process of doing that, you will have questions. There were certain areas that need clarity. And the weekly surgery sessions are designed for you to log into on a regular basis at a predetermined um, time between yourselves and your uh, online tutor to discuss any issues, to, to really explore ideas, so on and so forth. And also to interact and network with other fellow students. That's the only discipline that's not flexible. That's the only discipline that takes place on a weekly basis at the set time. 
and I'm sure in regards of how busy we are, we can at least create one hour per week in order to maintain that discipline. And the reason we're doing that is purely to enable you to interact with other students, enable you not to feel isolated and lonely, and have to feel that you're the only person doing this particular module. And in the same time, exchange ideas. Uh, because that's ex exchanging ideas and networking is something which we promote a great deal. There's a standard framework. We have what's called generic and specific uh, uh, modules. All our modules have a standard generic framework of 11 units, breaking everything down to components and getting you to actually self-test at the end of each, each week. And to, to really take a pulse of yourself to establish whether or not you, you've acquired the necessary knowledge and understanding. That's very generic across the board. To the extent that if you successfully complete every end of unit progress to some weekly basis, we could technically contribute up to 10% of the overall grade for your coursework for that module by just successfully completing every end of unit progress test at the end of each unit. That is our, I suppose, way of trying to motivate you to engage on weekly basis, to take, uh, test yourself on weekly basis, and you can test as, well, as many times as you want, and in the same time be rewarded for that. And that joined up thinking actually proved to be extremely successful uh, or instrumental in allowing students to get high grades. So that's something which uh, we uh, encourage you to, to, to really get involved. And we've got short videos for introductions, self-assessment questions, end of unit progress tests. Absolutely everything that's necessary in your shopping bag, I suppose, in order to be able to craft what you're doing to your own benefit. So the standard framework has discussion about topics, case studies, so on and so forth. But Again, I'm going back to repeat myself on it's so important for you to think, it's so important for you to reflect, it's so important for you to draw a parallel with what you're learning on a daily basis to your own everyday professional life and how you can, by what you're learning, apply that quite immediately into your professional life and get yourself, um, I suppose, a better or a much more... Uh, sleeker manager or leader. We have a calendar of academic year. We encourage our students not to study more than two modules per semester. We strongly advise them not to do that. And uh, we seldom allow students to do that. However, some of you guys may find that two modules are too much and you might decide to do one module per trimester. Be okay to live with that. Because it's gonna have to somehow uh, dovetail that this program's got to, or these studies have to dovetail themselves into your requirements at both private and professional level. Please uh, bear in mind all the presentations and all the lecture slides are available to you electronically and that's something which you can uh, prove through at your uh, convenience again and if you have any questions either come back to me directly or Helen but more importantly, they go back to your academic consultants. The academic consultants are there to, to really answer any questions you have. You will be investing in time, you will be investing in money, in monetary terms rather, in order to acquire this qualification. And we have absolutely no problem whatsoever with yourself, asking as many questions as possible. The more questions you ask, actually, the more we encourage we become. Because we need in, in students who actually know exactly what they're doing and why they're doing what they're doing. So the calendar of the academic year gives you an indication of how we really guide you through your studies. And we don't have a summer break unless you want to have one. We don't have a winter break unless you want to have one. We have trimesters. Historically, uh, we used to study two terms, September to December, January to May, and we have summer breaks. With this particular pro program, we've decided to have trimesters. So it's roll and roll off, and that allows you to, to have that joined up education. As busy individuals, 
if you leave something and go back to it three or four months down the line, because of all the things that happens in that three or four months, can really get in the way of having to then spend some time to go back and reflect and to establish where you were, what you left off before you pick up things to move forward. So that's where things are going to be, I suppose, make it be much more easier for you. And we do have, as I explained earlier, on all sorts of uh, interactive activities. Um, the platform we use is a Moodle platform. And um, it takes you through the step-by-step -step of how things are. So it's holding hand kind of a thing. At the beginning, and please, please forgive us if you feel patronized. We don't try to patronize anybody. We just try to maneuver you into the mapping processes that's required in order to get you to, to really uh, get educated smartly. We don't want you to be bogged down by trying to find your own way by navigating in the dark. So quite a lot of what we do is it's got that directions of directly so you could concentrate fully your all your uh, I suppose energy until really what the qualifications are all about what the module is all about what the challenges are what the aims and objectives are rather than being distracted by uh, by I suppose navigation processes so you need to interact there are places to interact and everything that you need is there, including some frequently asked questions. Because there's so many questions that you have, and if you go to frequently asked questions that you already have, you might find that the answer is already there. Because majority of the questions aren't unique just to one student. It's, it, uh, they tend to be predominantly the general questions. So these are some of the examples that I'm putting on display for you guys to get to moving forward. We have my role as a program director. I also lead this particular program. I also have a, a portfolio group of uh, academic colleagues uh, who would lead every single module. We have academic team who would actually at times when necessary team up with the module leader in order to provide knowledge and understanding to our students. We also have online tutors. So the, all of those, all of the above in effect, are to provide you with the academic backup. We also have a very, very robust administrative uh, backup where if you have any administrative uh, questions, you can, you can direct it to, for example, our global online support team. And even if it's an academic question and um, you're not clear, you can direct that to global online support team. However, we always strongly uh, always strongly advise you to, to do all your communication through our mobile platform because we have a dedicated group of individuals who are continuously looking, looking out for any queries that you have. And the other three requirements are standard blue chip, I suppose, um, MBA, you, know, you have to have a degree, honest degree, um, plus at least two years related uh, supervisory experience. We know some of you guys may not have the honest degree or you may not have a degree. Then we ask you to provide evidence of CPD, continuous prof professional development, and substantial amount of supervisory and management um, experience. So this is more or less for all. However, part of this uh, left at the discretion of uh, myself and my team to decide whether or not your application is suitable if it's outside the norm to, um, to join the program. Not because we're trying to be too selective, it's because we don't want to set you up for four. You're going to invest in your time, you're going to invest money, you're going to sacrifice so much in order to be educated. And the last thing we want is to allow somebody who doesn't have the benchmark or the basis to this study and to struggle and fail. We just don't want you to fail. However, I've got students with, uh, without a degree, eight, 10 years, five, eight, 10 years, so senior, middle to senior management experience, and they're successfully completing programs and they have been extremely good and they've they managed to to really end up with flying colors. 
if your uh, if your first language is in Eng isn't English, then we really no way need to take an approved English language test. Or if you study your previous qualifications in English, or if you're working for an English speaking organization, then we'll consider all of these things. Again, the vo academic vocabulary itself is challenging enough, let alone not having the required English capabilities to, to cope with the, with the demand uh, of, of this particular program. We've had good feedback from students, uh, same as any environment, at times we are challenging, at the time students are challenging, but more often than not, um, we manage to we manage to succeed. I'm be proud of that. Myself and uh, our academic team and also our administrative team take pride in what they're doing. The very essence of academia is to make absolutely sure individuals, without any prejudice, all individuals succeed. And uh, it's the only environment where our aim is to make you as successful as possible and we provide you with all the knowledge and understanding we have without discretion. So the feedback that we got we get on a regular basis from our students is quite complimentary. And our challenge is to maintain that that sustainability and to make sure that we'll we'll get everybody, I suppose, learning from each other moving forward. The total tuition fee, so on and so forth, I will leave that to my colleague Helen to, to, to discuss with yourselves because she's much, much more in touch with the interest rates, etc., etc. Please, please remember, Helen and her uh, portfolio of academic consultants are there to answer your questions. There is no such thing as a stupid question. There is no such thing as a minor question. We want you to be informed. We want you to make that mature judgment, and we do our best to help you as much as we can. I'm going to hand over now to my colleague Helen and we're going to jointly try to answer some of the questions if you have any. Over to you, Helen. Okay, super. Thank you so much, Mamed. That was uh, very informative and I can see that we have quite a few questions already. Okay, so Sabia's question is, I just want to know what will happen if I do not finish my module on time? Oh, it's, it's a very subjective question which requires a subjective answer. Unfortunately, I can't give an objective answer. If the module is not finished on time, it depends on the circumstances. If you have an extenuating circumstance, mitigating circumstance, of course, if you notify us well in advance, then we judge that and we can give you extension. If you just don't, have, if you just don't submit the coursework on time, then that becomes a totally different factor. In that case, we will fail the module. However, we'll give you a benefit of, benefit of, benefit of the doubt and we allow you to one more chance to resubmit that particular course. Well, however, the way we've got the module bite-sized, then you should be able to very quickly establish whether it's manageable or not. And the sooner we know if you have any challenges, the better. Then it allows us to communicate with you, to make a judgment, you know, to establish what are the circumstances and how we can genuinely help. If, if it's within our power, we will help you in any way we can. You guys are highly tuned professionals and what you deal with is business unusual. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I wake up every morning, come to my office and no matter how accurately I try to forecast what my day is going to be like, so always surprises for me. And those surprises at times are large, some of them are small, and we appreciate that. And at times, uh, circumstances beyond your control, uh, it, it forces you to, to, to ask for extension. I've asked for extension from Helen, actually, last week. I said, my dear Helen, I need an extension, please. I can't do the webinar on Monday because due to circumstances beyond my control, I had a mitigating circumstance. Can we please talk to all our delegates and ask them whether we can have it on Wednesday or not? And if, if any of you guys have signed up prior to last week, you would notice, you would realize, oh, it was changed. It wasn't Helen's fault. It wasn't Stefan's fault. It was Mamet. Because something happened. Something happened which was outside my control. And I could have been two places at one. And 
the, the situation was so mitigating that things had to happen. And that's the reality of life. And uh, uh, Helen, forgive me for going into depth with this. I just want our students to know that if they're fair, we are fair with them. So the sooner we know, the better. Excellent. Thank you. And um, uh, Mohammed's question is, I have vast years of management experience and have not managed to get uh, an undergraduate degree. Uh, will you be able to accept me because of my wonderful years of work experience? Mohammed, if you recall, only about three, four minutes ago, I've touched on that. Uh, of course we will. Of course we will. You've, you've the experience you gained at times and that's why I said we need to now we look at it. And again, it goes back to academic consultants, and Helen's team, who actually will guide you with that because they know they, they have a portfolio of a lot of people like yourselves. Actually, Mohammed, the MBA was designed for likes of yourself anyway, for individuals with vast level of experience, but they want some sort of a reassurance that what they're doing is the right way of doing it and whether there are any other smart way of solving problems so on and so forth. Of course we can say that. However, we have to look at that carefully, as I said earlier on, to make sure we are not setting you up for, for fall. If you do have that vast managerial experience, if you do, what comes with that normally is continuous professional development as well. It'd be our pleasure to consider that. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm just going to add on to that, that it's imperative that your CV um, shows all your roles and responsibilities on a managerial level in real detail. Um, so do get in touch with your academic consultant and we'll be able to advise you on that. Okay. Um, and Supin's question is, I'm a medical doctor and I wish to proceed with an MBA in healthcare. What are my perspectives as a medical administrator? Um, again, I had a subjective question. I think the, because you're a medical practitioner, the natural progression is to take uh, specialist MBA in health management. What I suggest is please have a look at our journalists as well as our specialists. Our specialist program, yes, it will it will it will improve your prospects of taking the route. So of course it will improve it, uh, your prospects. But have a look at our journalists as well. You might decide, sir. Sorry, what was the name of, of, of candidate's name, the questioner's name. Um, okay, so I've actually lost the that whole thing I made. Sorry, I've actually deleted the question. But oh, okay. not <laughs> not so forgive me if I, I, I can't recall your name. Um, you got two options. Take MBA in uh, health management and become a specialist with the title of MBA health management after your name, which you highlights your specialism, or Take a journalist MBA and your title is going to be a doctor, whatever the doctorate is in, and your name and surname, MBA. However, you can still, even within your journalist route, do your thesis based on healthcare. That might give, make you much, much more marketable, flexible in two ways. If you're planning sometime in the future, possibly, probably, to have a leadership role which may not necessarily be within medical profession. But if it's within the medical profession, you can always say, oh, my thesis is based on uh, healthcare. So it's really, again, left to your judgment. Please talk to uh, our academic consultants, uh, the Stafford Group. Need be, talk to Helen, talk to me directly. And on an individual basis, we're more than happy to advise you further. Absolutely. And James's question is um, about uh, the accreditation um, regarding ACSB. Um, accreditation is very important to me. Um, if I start the program now, um, and I believe that it is under or undergoing the ACSB accreditation, um, if I complete it in the next two to three years, will I still have that ACSB accreditation? Uh, open, I, I do sincerely hope we will be going through all the final stages of ASCSB accreditation. I can't tell you exactly when it's going to be, James. Uh, I had an email from prospective student asking the same question um, this morning. 
I don't know because submission has been made, the lighter come back saying perfect or whatever. We don't know how long it's going to take. I sincerely hope and I am confident that by the time we finish the qualification, you're talking two or three years here, and again, quoting what you said yourself, James, I sincerely hope that a CSB will be part of our portfolio. And of course, as a graduate at that moment in time, as an alumni, you say an MBA with the university that's accredited AA CSB. Good. And uh, Serene's question is, um, I'm planning to try and finish this MBA in the shortest possible time period. However, if I need to extend it, what would be the maximum time that I would have to complete this program? Again, it's a, it, it depends. You can, obviously, I'm sure, Serena, I'm not going to um, patronize you. You know exactly how quickly you can do it because it's just two plus two equals four kind of thing. Um, if, again, circumstances beyond your control, you can take time out, you can take six months out, you can take a year out, you come back, suspend your studies and come back after a year. You can come back to us after that year. Yeah. So, excuse me, I want to suspend my study further another year, so on and so forth. You may decide to take one module rather than two modules per trimester. You may decide to take one semester out for family reasons or you want to go around the globe on holiday or whatever. Flexibility is there. However, Seren, my advice to you is it always becomes much, much more challenging to pick things up if you had a long break in between. It's, it's like, I don't know if you go to the gym or not, if you haven't been to the gym for six weeks, you go back to the gym, the muscles start to ache again because it takes time to get back into the zone again. And the same thing applies, Seren, to uh, your qualification, your studies. Please, it's there. Is there, if the medical circumstance then is outside your control, however, it's over to you. Okay, and Cheryl's question is, I have been told by my academic consultant at Stafford that induction is very important. Why is this so? Charles, it's because of the mapping process. Simple as that. A uh, smart way of doing things. If I come to Dubai, then I need to know how to get to Dubai. Once I arrive at that beautiful airport, I need to know after that huge bus journey, my goodness, it takes forever to get me to my terminal, which hotel I'm staying. I like to know the driver knows where he is going. I don't want him to take me to Qatar. I don't want him to take me to Abu Dhabi. I want him to take me to my hotel, the best route, the sleekest route. And when I get to my hotel, I need to know where my room is. So I've got two ways of doing it. Continuously stress manage and not know where I am. Get to the airport, oh my goodness, which bus am I going to get on to get to the terminal? Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Oh, do it the smart way and induct myself into my journey. It's a journey. That journey to us has a map. And that map is going to allow you to do the smart plan. Please don't make life any more difficult for yourself than it potentially could be. Because you have your profession, you have your private life, and you have your education to worry about. Do the smart way. I rest my nice case. One. Nice answer, I mean, great. Um, okay, and we have another question is, can I undertake a core module as well as an optional module at the same time? Answer is yes, but it depends. Leave that to our discretion, please. We, uh, as you know, Helen, we normally communicate at the beginning of each trimester, the portfolio of students, trying to make sure the modules we're going to offer them are the modules that really fit for the purpose so on and so forth. It's possible. Leave that. Trust our judgment. We work very closely uh, with Stafford and academic consultants. We work very closely with the module leaders and uh, online tutors to make absolutely sure the modules that we are offering you each trimester is the best possible modules to take without making life 
any more challenges than it's already going to be. Good. And the next question is um, quite an interesting one. How receptive are tutors on this program? Um, I have started another MBA at another university, and unfortunately, when I ask questions or I try and get hold of my tutors, they are not readily available. So, how readily available are your tutors, and can I perhaps even visit them on the campus uh, if I am in the vicinity? This is a fantastic leading question. <laughs> it's a question that only requires one answer, all positive obviously because it's a leading question and thank you for the person who actually asked this question but genuine answer is and i don't mean this by just trust all we read and others we are here to do the best we can to be there for you i'm not saying we are fantastic 10 out of 10 i don't know you might then find that we're nine out of ten the experience shows and i put the uh, the comments that's come from students they're happy with us all things being equal, our colleagues, what are called the best 11, our best 11 academics are teaching you. Our best 11 online tutors are teaching you. And our best 11, to the best of the capability, try to give you that support. You're more than welcome to join us anytime. It's just let us know when you come in. We even invite you to come and sit in lectures with full time and so on and so forth. Upon successful completion of your program, you will get an invitation, an official in invitation from the university to come over in person to collect your qualification from our chancellor, meet the vice chancellor, meet the dean, and meet all the academic team, and you can bring a loved one or loved ones with you. So we do are here to provide the best we can. One thing that we know is the more transparent you are, the more honest we are, the more likely that we could have a level playing field and have mutuality. I'm a great believer of mutuality. Mutual trust, mutual respect, mutual goals, mutual responsibilities, and mutual rewards. And we are here to maintain that mutuality. Excellent. Um, and Fatima's question is, if I happen to fail an assignment, um, which I'm not planning to do, um, will the tutors be able to give me critical advice as to where I went wrong so that I can actually submit a second assignment? Fatima, very good question, very brave question actually, uh, if I may say so. Please don't fail. Uh, we give you all the tools, we give you all the tools to ensure that you don't fail, providing you deliver uh, what you have because ultimately it's your qualification. But at times circumstances change, unlikely event of you failing, of course you can um, uh, resubmit. However, the resubmission is going to be capped at just pass. The fundamental factor when you fail is to first of all show sympathy from our end because we don't judge. So you must have failed for a reason. Either you haven't gone through your induction as we begged you or you haven't paid attention to academic writing, as we appeal to you on several occasions, or you haven't done the crit critical analysis. These are some of the three common denominators. The fourth one is really rushing things, leaving things to the last minute. But at times things happen, Fatima. And at that moment in time, what you really need is guidance of where you've gone wrong, how you've gone wrong, why you've gone wrong, in order to make sure you get it right next time. So we provide you with all of that information to make absolutely sure you know what you need to do, then it's over to yourself. Good, then Nadal's question is, uh, what type of extra resources do we get? Um, is there an online library or do I have to go and buy any textbooks? Yes and no. Yes, there is online library, and you have access to electronic books, journal articles in tens of thousands through ABI, and uh, we will pay for every core textbook on your behalf. So all your core textbooks are we give access. Obviously, it has to be online version to you for free. Uh, although our uh, say other students here they have to pay 50 or 50 pounds minimum for each book so it's given to you for free and uh, if you need to 
really further your studies, develop your, uh, I suppose, knowledge and understanding, then we advise you, if you so desire, you can either rent, borrow books, or buy them because you need it in your toolbox. I was showing something to Helen earlier on, that is the last question, I'm going to remove the camera. This is my toolbox. Okay, my toolbox. Okay, you have a doctor earlier on uh, said, oh, I'm a medical practitioner, I'm sure the doctor has a bag. Mechanics have a toolbox. That's my toolbox, and I've got one over there as well. You know, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. I'm just surrounded by books because they are my toolbox. You need tools for your toolbox. Don't please look at books as oh my goodness, do I have to buy one or not? I suggest get everywhere to buy Christmas presents, birthday presents, New Year presents, Eid presents, everything. Buy me books, buy books, because you need those tools for your toolbox, and those you can't refer to. Some old, some new, some borrowed, some blue, and all of these are going to help you to really achieve what you want to achieve. Don't leave everything to memory, please, although you will develop that knowledge and understanding as well. Good, thank you. And Adil's question is quite an interesting one. Why are there no examinations in this MBA like other traditional MBAs? We made a very conscious decision of not putting the examinations. Examinations are called TCAs, Time Constraint Assessment. And you have to, under pressure of time, make decisions. Okay? We do that for you by getting you every week to go to the end of unit progress test and test yourself. Take your own pulse. Some people, the word exam scares them. You take your own pulse. Judge for yourself how you're going to deal with pressure, time under pressure. You can do that as many times until you get yourself as slick as you want to be. And then that can, the grades you get for all of those, I suppose, it, it well, not as you, I suppose, it does actually count for 10% of your overall grade. The other 90% of it, we get you to do some critical thinking. Critical thinking at your level because we're introducing it to you, because we're going to get you to get into it to make it an everyday life, requires crawl before run, before sprint. So we're developing your key skills of critical thinking. To do critical thinking, you need to reflect, to do reflection. Different people come to different conclusions at different times, hence the crosswalks. Good, and in Kozi is all the way from Uganda. Uh, welcome, Inkozi. And uh, his question is, I have completed my degree in English from a Ugandan university. Do I really need to provide any additional evidence of English proficiency? Was it English speaking at Ugandan university? Have you studied in English then? No. But what we're doing is, again, Helen, I'm repeating what you've put forward at the beginning. Uh, Put, make sure the application form is solid. Make sure your personal statement is solid. Make sure that it's convincing that you're actually making a right, mature judgment in order to do this qualification. And that's the key. And make sure to highlight that your qualification, you studied in English, and whether or not you work for an English-speaking organization. As I said earlier on, we just don't want to set anybody up for fall. And we just want to make sure, absolutely sure you're not compromised. Good. And uh, we almost finished with our questions. Um, this is a very popular one that we, we get quite often. Um, it comes from a G. Um, is distance learning mentioned on my degree certificate or transcript? Uh, this is very important for me uh, when I'm looking for work in the Middle East. Helen, as you very well know, and our students know, you gain qualifications called MBA. The mode of delivery doesn't have a hierarchy. Your qualification is exactly the same qualification as here. We don't mention the mode of delivery, whether it's part-time, whether it's full-time, whether it's blended, whether it's online. You have earned an MBA. 
exactly the same as the middle to senior manager who got his or her MBA face to face here at Craig Lockett. So exactly the same qualification, exactly the same certificate. I actually have an example of that certificate. Uh, just to, sorry, I just, this is not the one I had made earlier kind of thing, like blue Peter. It's a qualification. So that's what you get. You have got your MBA. Simple as that. Um, I hope I answered your question. Yeah, and um, I'm just going to add to that that exactly what Mamed was showing you. Uh, your academic consultant does have a copy of that sample degree certificate. Um, so you're very welcome to get in touch with us and we'll be able to send that through to you so that you can see exactly what uh, your degree certificate will look like when you do go to the UK and graduate. Okay, and uh, that's just about it, Mamed. I've managed to group all the questions together. Um, we are currently accepting applications for May. Uh, the application deadline is the 9th of May, so it's not very far away. So we do encourage you to try and send your documents to us as soon as possible and yeah. get a really important unconditional offer for you. Okay. Mamed, it was a great pleasure having you with us again this evening. And everyone that attended, it was lovely. Thank you so much for your questions. And uh, I hope that we'll see you soon. And my maid, I'm sure, is looking forward to having you on the program. Absolutely. Helen, thank you very much, for, as ever, for your professionalism. And thank you to all our prospective students for taking time. And I hope you've managed to answer the questions. Wish you all a good evening. Thank you. Good evening to all. Bye-bye.